He was a soldier, fearless and brilliant mind. He was a reformer and man with vision. He fought for one empire and on its ruins built modern republic. He changed one civilization and fate of one nation. He was one of the greatest statesmen of all time. His name was Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. Turkish Field Marshal, Revolutionary Statesman, Author, and the Founder of the Republic of Turkey, serving as its first president from 1923 until his death in 1938. Early Life Ataturk was born in 1881 in Salonika in Ottoman Empire, now Thessaloniki in Greece. His father, Ali Riza, had been a lieutenant in a local militia and his mother Zubaydhan, came from a farming community west of Salonika. Ali Riza died when Mustafa was seven years old, but he nevertheless had a significant influence on the development of his son's personality. Most important, he saw to it that his son's earliest education was carried out in a modern secular school, rather than in the religious school. After Ali Riza's death, Zubaydhan moved to her stepbrother's farm outside Salonika. Concerned that Mustafa might grow up uneducated, she sent him back to Salonika, where he enrolled in a secular school that would have prepared him for a bureaucratic career. Against his mother's wishes, Mustafa took the examination for entrance to the military secondary school. At the secondary school, Mustafa received the nickname of Kemal, meaning the perfect one, from his mathematics teacher. In 1895 he progressed to the military school in Monastir, now Bidala, North Macedonia. Having completed his education at Monastir, Mustafa Kemal entered the war college in Istanbul in March 1899. There was a good deal of political dissent in the air at the war college, directed against the despotism of Sultan Abdulhamid II. Mustafa Kemal remained aloof from it until his third year, when he became involved in the production of a clandestine newspaper. His activities were uncovered, but he was allowed to complete the course, graduating as a second lieutenant in 1902 and ranking in the top 10 of his class of more than 450 students. He then entered the General Staff College, graduating in 1905 as a captain and ranking fifth out of a class of 57. He was one of the empire's leading young officers. Early military career and first political activities Shortly after graduation, he was arrested by the police for his anti-monarchist activities. Following confinement for several months he was released only with the support of Riza Pasha, his former school director. After his release, Ataturk was assigned to the 5th Army based in Damascus as a staff captain. He joined a small secret revolutionary society of reformist officers, Motherland and Liberty. On June 20, 1907, he was promoted to the rank of senior captain and on October 13, 1907, was assigned to the headquarters of the 3rd Army in Manistur. He joined the Committee of Union and Progress, with membership number 322, although in later years he became known for his opposition to, and frequent criticism of, the policies pursued by the cup leadership. On June 22, 1908, he was appointed the inspector of the Ottoman railways in eastern Rumelia. In July 1908, he played a role in the Young Turk Revolution which seized power from Sultan Abdullah mid II and restored the constitutional monarchy. He was proposing depoliticization in the army, a proposal which was disliked by the leaders of the cup. As a result, he was sent away to Libya under the pretext of suppressing a tribal rebellion towards the end of 1908. He suppressed the revolt and returned to Istanbul in January 1909. In April 1909 in Istanbul, a group of soldiers began a counter-revolution and Ataturk was instrumental in suppressing the revolt. In 1910, he was called to the Ottoman provinces in Albania. Later, in the autumn, he was among the Ottoman military observers who attended the Picardy army maneuvers in France and in 1911, served at the Ministry of War in Istanbul for a short time. Balkan Wars and First World War Mustafa Kemal and a group of friends took part in Tobruk and Derna fronts during the war which started in 1911 against the Italians who were attacking Tripoli, Libya. He won the Battle of Tobruk against the Italian forces on December 22, 1911. He was then appointed to Derna front as the commander-in-chief on March 6, 1912. On December 1, 1912, Ataturk arrived at his new headquarters on the Gallipoli Peninsula during the First Balkan War. In June 1913, 
During the Second Balkan War, he took part in the Ottoman army forces commanded by Kaim Bey that recovered Daimdoka and Adirne together with most of eastern Thrace from the Bulgarians. In 1914, the Ottoman Empire entered the European and Middle Eastern theaters of World War I allied with the Central Powers. Ataturk was given the task of organizing and commanding the 19th Division attached to the 5th Army during the Battle of Gallipoli. He became the frontline commander after correctly anticipating where the Allies would attack, and held his position until they retreated. Following the Battle of Gallipoli, Ataturk served in Adirne until January 14, 1916. He was then assigned to the command of the 16th Corps of the 2nd Army on the Russian front and promoted to general, acquiring the title of Pasha. He was the only Turkish general to win any victories over the Russians on the Eastern Front. On 7 August, he rallied his troops and mounted a counter-offensive. Two of his divisions captured Beatlis and Moose, upsetting the calculations of the Russian command. After short-term duties in Damascus and Aleppo, he came to Istanbul in 1917. On August 15, 1918, he returned to Aleppo as the commander of the 7th Army. At this front, he undertook successful defensive battles against the British forces. On October 31, 1918, one day after the signing of the Maudros Armistice, he was appointed as the commander of the Lightning Army's group. Upon the abolishment of this army, on November 13, 1918, he came to Istanbul and commenced duties at the Ministry of War. Empire and Ruins and Birth of Republic On April 30, 1919, Ataturk was assigned as the inspector of the 9th Army Troops Inspectorate to reorganize what remained of the Ottoman military units and to improve internal security. On May 19, 1919, Mustafa Kemal Pasha landed in the Black Sea port of Samsun to start the War of Independence. In defiance of the Sultan's government, he rallied a liberation army in Anatolia and convened the Congress of Reserve and Shivas which established the basis for the new national effort under his leadership. In June 1919, he issued the Amasya Circular, declaring the independence of the country was in danger. He resigned from the Ottoman army on 8 July, and the Ottoman government issued a warrant for his arrest. Later, he was condemned to death. On September 4, 1919, he assembled a Congress in Shivas. Those who opposed the Allies in various provinces in Turkey issued a declaration named National Pact. Ataturk was appointed as the head of the Executive Committee of the Congress. This gave him the legitimacy he needed for his future politics. The last election to the Ottoman Parliament held in December 1919 gave a sweeping majority to candidates headed by Ataturk, who himself remained in Ankara. It was dissolved by British forces on March 18, 1920, shortly after it adopted the Misak Mili, National Pact. Ataturk called for a national election to establish a new Turkish parliament seated in Ankara, the Grand National Assembly GNA. On April 23, 1920, the GNA opened with Ataturk as the speaker. Fighting on many fronts, he led his forces to victory against rebels and invading armies. Following the Turkish triumph at the two major battles at Ananyu in western Turkey, the Grand National Assembly conferred on Mustafa Kemal Pasha the title of commander-in-chief with the rank of marshal. At the end of August 1922, the Turkish armies won their ultimate victory. Within a few weeks, the Turkish mainland was completely liberated, the armistice signed, and the rule of the Ottoman dynasty abolished. In July 1923, the national government signed the Lausanne Treaty with Great Britain, France, Greece, Italy, and others. In mid-October, Ankara became the capital of the new Turkish state. On October 29th, the Republic was proclaimed and Mustafa Kemal Pasha was unanimously elected President of the Republic. Great Reformer and Leader of the Nation Ataturk made many reforms in order to bring Turkey to the level of contemporary civilizations. Those reforms can be put under five main topics. 1. Political Reforms Abolishment of the Sultanate declaration of the republic abolishment of caliphate 2 social reforms women were given equal rights with men the revolution of headgear and outfit closing of dervish lodges and shrines the surname law abolishment of nicknames pious and royal titles adoption of the international calendar time and measurements 3 judicial reforms abolishment of the canon law and stating the new turkish civil code and other legislation to suit secular order 4 educational and cultural reforms 
Integration of Education, Adoption of the New Turkish Alphabet, Establishment of the Turkish Language in Historical Societies, Organization of the University Education, Innovations in Fine Arts. 5. Economical Reforms Abolishment of Old Taxation Laws, Encouragement of the Farmers, Establishment of Model Farms, Legislation of the Encouragement of the Industry Law and Establishment of Industrial Corporations, Implementing First and Second Development Plans, Construction of New Highways to Reach Every Corner of the Country, In Accordance with the New Surname Law, Turkish Grand National Assembly Granted Mustafa Kemal with the surname Ataturk on November 24, 1934. Ataturk had been elected twice as the Speaker of the House, National Assembly, on April 24, 1920 and 13 Augustus 1923. His chairmanship at that time, was equal to the head of state and the government combined. On October 29, 1923 Republic was declared and Ataturk was elected as the first President of the Republic. According to the Constitution presidential elections held for every four years. Ataturk had been re-elected as the President of the Republic in 1927, 1931 and 1935 by the Turkish Grand National Assembly. Ataturk very frequently used to go for fact-finding trips in the country. He kept in contact with local authorities and directed them personally in every occasion. In the capacity of the President of the Republic, he received the visiting foreign presidents, premiers, ministers and commanders with great respect and authority. Personal Life He married with Latif Hanım on January 29, 1923. Together they had many trips around the country. Their marriage lasted until August 5, 1925. As a great lover of children, Ataturk adopted his seven daughters and his son Mustafa, a young shepherd boy. He also had two children under his protection, Abdurrahim and Isan. In 1937, he donated his farms to the state treasury and some of his real estate to Ankara and Bursa municipality councils. He divided his inheritance among his sister, his adopted children and the Turkish language and historical societies. He enjoyed reading, listening music, dancing, horse riding and swimming. He was very much interested in the Western Anatolian folk dance Zabak, wrestling and listening to Remelia songs. He had great pleasure in playing backgammon and billiards. He was also a nature lover. He very often used to visit his farm Ataturk Horm and Sift Lichy Ataturk Forest Farm and took part at works in person. Ataturk was proficient in French and German. On November 10, 1938 at 9.05 in the morning, in Istanbul, Dolmabas Palace, he died of the liver ailment he was suffering from. He was buried with a ceremonial funeral in a temporary place of rest at the Ethnographical Museum in Ankara on November 21, 1938. After the building of Anat Kabir, Ataturk Mausoleum, he was taken to his permanent place of rest with a grand ceremony on November 10, 1953. Notable quotes and interesting facts The Turkish nation, which had 253,000 casualties during the Gala police battles, fought against the Untaught states. Mustafa Kemal's command to his soldiers, I am not ordering you to attack. I am ordering you, to die changed the fate of the battle. Modern Turkish history may be said to begin on the morning of May 19, 1919, with Mustafa Kemal's landing at Samsun, on the Black Sea coast of Anatolia. So psychologically meaningful was this date for Mustafa Kemal that, when in later life he was asked to provide his date of birth for an encyclopedia article, he gave it as May 19, 1919. While in Bulgaria, he met with Dmitrina Kovacheva, the daughter of Bulgarian General Stylian Kovachev, against whose forces he had fought during the Balkan Wars. He too danced at the ball and started to secretly date in the following days. Ataturk twice asked Dmitri and his parents for their permission to marry her, the second time was in 1915, during World War I, and was twice refused, which left him with a lifelong sadness. Quotes. Everything we see in the world is the creative work of women. Teachers are the one and only people who save nations. Unless a nation's life faces peril, war is murder. Peace at home, peace in the world. Science is the most reliable guide in life. If one day, my words are against science, choose science. <laughs>